So imagine this scene, which is probably very familiar to you if you're a therapist. You've just seen back-to-back clients all day and you are dying to go home, but there's that whisper of your inner supervisor telling you that you've still got to do your notes. So you flip open the laptop and your mind just goes completely blank. You can barely remember your first client's name, much less how to start writing a soap note. I've definitely been there. I've had that mental short circuit. And it actually makes a lot of sense if you think about what we're asking our brains to do. We spend all day being in this very empathic, tuned state of mind, listening and thinking, being in the moment with our client. And now we have to switch gears and think in this very dry, clinical way as we write notes. I think the shift in operating systems in our brain is a huge demand on us, especially if you've got a touch of the ADHD like me. If we've not met before, my name is Oliver, and aside from being a therapist in private practice, a clinical supervisor and a clinical director, I'm also a bit of a nerd. And I've been fascinated with AI, ChatGPT, mid-journey, and you probably know that if you spent more than, I don't know, three seconds on my website. One of the things I have been thinking about is how AI is going to influence therapy therapists and our careers. I'm pretty confident in all of my experiments that we are not going to be out of a job anytime soon, but I'm constantly thinking about the ways that AI could and should make our lives as therapists easier. I think it would be amazing if one day we could find that AI that could write our notes for us, that just sits in the office with us and summarizes everything and puts it all on simple practice. That is beneath And let's just go home right after that last session. Unfortunately, HIPAA has really got in the way of that. So we are not there yet. But how can AI help us write notes and make us more efficient at our jobs? I decided that what some mental health professionals need is a personal trainer for the electronic health record. By that, I mean just me. So not the personal trainer that yells at you, but more like a soul cycle spin instructor, you know, The ones that's all sort of motivational and spiritual as they make you pedal. You know what's next, right? Yup, it's time to do the assessment part of your soap notes. Right? Just a little reminder. Come on, Oliver. Do you know what therapeutic intervention you used? Did you explore feelings or did you probe for more effect? Your entire career in the mental health profession depends on you finishing this note in the next five, four, three, two. Don't worry. I am the Siggy bot and I am much nicer about helping you do notes. Now, before I go into what my new free AI SiggyBot 3000 can do, and spoiler alert, please don't get your hopes up. Let's get practical with some tips on self-care around doing notes. I love a good transition ritual. So a short activity or routine in between sessions or at the end of a long day that helps you switch gears more naturally. And that could be taking a few deep breaths or doing some yoga stretches. And I like taking the dog for a walk around the block. Break down tasks into smaller steps. So instead of thinking about the whole note or all of the notes that you have to do, break it down into sections, either by client, just have to write the subjective part and then take a little break and then do the objective part. Whatever it takes for you to not be focused at the top of the mountain, but base camp. Always take a break when you feel overwhelmed. There's no point forcing yourself to do something if your brain is out of energy. I say set realistic expectations too. Don't expect to write the perfectly detailed note after every session. It's okay to just start with the basics and then just add more information later um, when you have more time and more energy. Be kind to yourself. Remember that writing your notes is just one part of the job and it's okay if it's not perfect. You don't have to beat yourself up. You feel licensed. You already passed the exams. You don't have to get an A in this. So let me show you what the SiggyBot 3000 is all about. This is what it looks like when you open up the SiggyBot 3000. You can choose to jump in at the subjective, objective, assessment, or plan level. But let's start with subjective. See what he says. Hopefully, first of all, he's going to remind you that you cannot put any client information in there and he can't actually write your notes for you. This is not HIPAA compliant. I will send your license number to the BBS if you do that again. So it's not HIPAA compliant, but any client details into ChatGPT, we just don't know where it goes. So I ask you if you're ready to start and you say yes. It's going to take you through three parts of the subjective aspect of a soap note. What is it that the client came into therapy with? 
It's going to give you a couple of ways to start that sentence. It's going to give you just a reminder of what it is that you need to write in the first line. Assuming either one of those work for you, we're ready to move on. And it gives you another line to remind you that there are themes of the session. So this is hopefully something that you can easily remember. Uh, you remember general themes. Like First of all, they came in and they started talking about their relationship and then um, discussed coping with relational difficulties with their partner. If you wanted to type in, um, you know, more ideas, it should give you a couple more options to choose from. Great. So client discussed exploration of conflicts with uh, wanting to stay with their partner and wanting to leave. Uh, it's just prompting you to continue. So let's move on. And the final part of the soap note, at least when it comes to this program, and if you want me to add more, just let me know. Leave me a comment if you think it needs to include anything else in the soap section, um, is the history of symptoms. So that's quite easy. Um, now you're ready to move on. Sure. I was just about to say that the objective section is all about facts, observations, data, but he reminds you of that. The first part is since COVID, we have to write the location of the session. So this is a reminder if you're doing telehealth to make sure that you um, got their consent and um, you confirmed that they were in the right address. Otherwise, if you're in your office, session was held in person at the therapist's office. Good reminder. Sometimes people forget that. But let's move on and see what it does next. The next part is noticing anything about their arrival or um, if they were early, late or on time. Sometimes that's really clinically relevant. Sometimes you just do it out of habit. Um, but I notice when clients are late, I notice when they're early. I'm going to make a note of that just to see if it means anything in the future. The objective part also includes what you observed about the client's presentation. So were they appropriately dressed or were they um, disheveled or um, wearing black or not wearing makeup? So in private practice, I think it's um, pretty standard to say the client was appropriately dressed. Occasionally, there's changes in that. But I think if you're working in a clinic or another situation, you probably pay more attention to this. And uh, the SiggyBot will give you more ideas on what presentation would look like if you needed to. The next part is about the presenting affect, their emotional state. Um, this is how the client appeared to you um, in terms of mood. So I think this is a good one to ask for more, more ideas on because um, there's a lot of suggestions here that it should be able to come up with because sometimes feelings words are hard for us to remember at the end of a long day. So there it goes, it's giving you more client appeared mildly anxious, presented as reflective and insightful regarding their mental health symptoms. There's some good stuff in this. So let's move on um, to their thinking process. And it's smart to do a mental status for me in private practice. It's pretty standard for me to say that they appeared with appropriate orientation with respect to person, place, time, and situation. I think I see psychiatrists write orientation times three. I just hit the wrong button and had to restart my chat. I wanted to show you that you can jump in anywhere that you want to on your soap note. You don't have to go through the whole experience. So I messed up right at assessment and um, you should be able to tap in assessment and it'll take you right there and take you through the subsections of the assessment part. So wherever you start, it's going to give you that reminder that um, not to put any confidential material in here and it can't write your notes for you. And if you do, I think it's probably going to give you a bit of a scolding. The first part of assessment is about the therapist's analysis. So it gives you two ways to start that. If you want some more help with that? You just type more options, see what it comes up with. So again, it's just going to guide you through what you can start your note with, and then you fill in the blanks. Uh, would you like to explore the next subject? Next section, please. So after that, it's going to remind you to write in if you did any testing. Now, I don't do a lot of testing. I'm a therapist, not a psychologist, but um, sometimes you can assess for suicide. Sometimes you can, um, you know, assess deeper about they've been using their homework skills. So that would go in this point as well. One of the important things to write about notes is how the client is progressing. So the evaluation part is just going to prompt you again 
to say if the client is the same or improving. Um, it, I think it's important in our notes to document progress. So next, we have to comment on mood and we have to decide whether the client's mood matches what they're saying, whether it's fluctuating, congruent, incongruent. Ziggybot is going to help you remember ways to start the sentence so that you can finish it. See what it says when you say, oops, when you say more, mo instead of more. Just more sentences there that get the ball rolling for you. In assessment, we write about progress, noticeable progress um, in managing anxiety. Um, always remember to put that as evidence by, just to show that you're doing your... And I think you've probably got the hang of this now, but let's go into the plan. Plan is the last part of the SOAP note, and it's all about progress, necessary adjustments to an existing treatment plan, any activities, objections, reinforcement, summarize the progression or regression, and you start with looking about the interventions you will use next time. The only thing that I really need to say about this is this has got a lot of interventions programmed into it. So I would take advantage of this P1 part, say more and see what it comes up with. This is totally where I get most stuck trying to think of the clinical language for what I did in the session. And this part of ChatGPT has so much programmed into it. So take advantage of it. There's nothing outstanding, but you, you are going to make a note of the things that you are yet to uh, pick up on or that you're going to follow up on, follow up on homework or um, make sure that client booked another session sees a doctor. Impairments is the final part and you can skip to that. It's just a line or two. And obviously planning is anything else that you're going to do in the future sessions. I'll put the link to the Siggy bot right here in the comments. So take a look, try it out. Um, I think it's going to be worth your while to snoop around all of this AI stuff and see if you can find ways to use it in your practice and think about how it might impact us as a profession in years to come. Leave me questions or feedback below in the comments. I would love to hear from you, especially if you think this is missing any part of a soap note that you want me to throw in there. I'll happily do that. And if you're more of a dap note kind of therapist, I think I am nerdy enough to try this again and see if I can do a dap note for you.